Welcome to part 6 of the series on the M5 forecasting competition. Hope everyone's still doing okay. In this video, we're finally going to start using some typical machine learning techniques for this time series problem. This video is going to be an overview of some of the things I'm planning to try in the next couple of days. It's going to be a mixture of first defining the problem in different ways and reformatting the data to suit those different problem definitions. Second, create some features for the different problem definitions. And lastly, going over some small tricks that may help us in getting a good and generalizable performance. If you find this interesting, please like this video and subscribe for future videos coming soon on implementing all these approaches. As always, timestamps will be in the description below. The notebooks in this video is still kind of just a draft and it's not very pretty, so I'll probably only make this public in the next couple days. My plan for now is to start with just building some baseline models using extra trees regressor. I often use this as the baseline model for heterogeneous tabular data like this because there's not that many parameters to tune for to get a relatively good performance. We're not going to go into too much details of what an extra trees regressor is, but if you're familiar with the random forest regressor, it's basically that except it doesn't bootstrap and the splitting value at each node is chosen randomly instead of optimized for the best splitting value as in a random forest. Here's a gentle recap of how the training data is formatted when it's given to us. Each row describes historical sales performance of a product in one of the 10 stores. So we could just use all the historical sales numbers here as features and make this a multi-label regression problem. To do that, we would just set the label to a 28 element array. And elements in the array would take values from the last 28 days of sales unit. I like to think that in any machine learning problem, the format of our input and label speaks directly about the problem definition. Using this format, we're basically asking the model for any product in any store. If I give you the sales number going back to a couple hundred days, as well as what category and store this product's in, are you able to tell me the sales level of the next 28 days? The benefit of doing it this way is that the model will have a close access to historical data when it makes predictions And the data shape, 30,000 by around 2,000, is not horrendously large. However, the obvious downside of this is that we can't really make any more interesting features. For example, we're given this calendar data frame with features describing each day, like what day of the week and month of the year this day is on, what events or holidays are going on on that day, and what type of event that was. These can be useful because certain products can have a very close relationship with holidays. For example, Thanksgiving turkey and Halloween candies. Additionally, if we're feeding the model day by day data, we're able to create features such as lags. For example, was the sales amount 28 days ago, 29 days ago, 30 days ago, and etc. So if we can redefine this problem, say we ask the model for any given day, if I give you information about what event is on that day, what time of the year and position of week that day is on, as well as the product category and location and some recent sales behavior of that product, are able to predict the sales of this product on this day. I'll show you an example of what the feature data frame will look like in order to redefine the problem like this. Now each row describes a series on a certain day, and the label is just the sales number. Once we're done reformatting the data and creating these informative features describing each data point, we can get into the model building process. Two of the main things in building a machine learning model are first, hyperparameter tune, and second, cross-validate to pick a good parameter that's both good and generalizable. For hyperparameter tuning, I'm planning to use random search in a range of reasonable values for number of estimators, maximum depth, and maximum features. There's also a parameter specific to this problem that's worth looking into, and that's how much historical data do we want to feed as features. Like we've seen in previous videos, a lot of level 12 series starts with zero cells, and those are actually periods of time where they're not on shelf. So we can also play with different start dates as training set. Then because this WRMSSE is a custom loss function, I'm going to do cross-validation the manual way and create a loop to take different periods in history as training and test set. Evaluate the score and take average of all the cross-validation folds the store the parameters with the best scores. Just one caveat in doing cross-validation, our feature's D underscore day number doesn't actually mean sales on that day. Instead, they mean the sales number of a certain lag day with respect to the start of forecast day. 
So as long as we have the same number of the underscore date features for each fold in the cross validation, we're keeping everything consistent across different folds, even though the column names for the features we train on are different. After this, we'll just need to make predictions on the Kaggle validation set using our best parameters and submit. I'll keep you guys updated once this draft is polished and finishes running. Until then, please stay safe and happy. See you next time.